Another extremely important piece of internet vision was a piece by Van Iver Bush in the Atlantic Monthly that came out in 1945. The name of this piece was As We May Think. Van Iver Bush was heavily involved in the war effort that had just ended. And part of what he did in this piece was trying to imagine a new use and a new future for some of the technologies that people had been using to wage war for the past decade. And the system that Van Iver Bush uh, described in this piece, which he eventually coined um, the term Memex for, was something that I think if Van Iver Bush was alive today, he died in 1974, which I think is very sad because he never saw the fruition of this vision. But I think if Van Iver Bush was alive today, he would recognize a lot of his vision of the Memex in today's internet. So the Memex sort of has a, uh, a, an intentional uh, similarity with memory. And the idea behind this machine was that it was supposed to augment our human memories. Van Iver Bush was really concerned with our ability to process information, our ability to remember things, our ability to search. And the Memex was designed with features that would allow us to do this extremely easily. Now again, this is 1945, so this is two years before the invention of the first transistor. And it was really the transistor, if nothing else, that led to the, today's modern computers and all of their capabilities. So Vannevar Bush, like Charles Babbage before him, was limited in the sense that he didn't, hadn't seen the invention of the core technologies that were needed to build the machines that he needed to realize his vision. But he tried to sort of uh, coach the vision in the terms of the day. So a lot of what he talks about is, is systems that were based on microfilm. So you know, can we somehow encode all the world's information on microfilm and then be, to build these systems that can summon it at will and stuff like that? And of course, that system, much like Charles Babbage's analytical, mechanical analytical engine, would be totally infeasible to create. Um, and so, you know, he did live to see the dawn of the transistor age and of the computer age and the dawn of the first machines that would actually be able to start to realize some of his vision. But it was really the act of sort of connecting these machines together. And then I would argue, I think probably the closest thing we have to uh, Bush's vision today is the idea of a search engine. So, you know, rather than having to, you know, think about all the things now that you don't have to remember about the world. It's so easy uh, to look up things on a search engine. And of course, we're building new interfaces to do this. So something like Siri um, or you know, Google's equivalent or Amazon's equivalent, these tools that essentially allow us to now voice query these huge databases of information and have them answer these questions about the world. And that's just some, that's additional things that we don't have to pack into our brains. We don't have to remember, we don't have to worry about you know, encoding in our memories. We can. Um, some of that information is at will. Obviously, all the information we're recording about our lives now on various social networking platforms, so things like Facebook and stuff like that, again, sort of a proxy for our human memories. I don't have to remember exactly what we did in the particular week. I can upload a bunch of photos to Facebook, and then a couple years later, maybe Facebook will provide me a reminder. And that's sort of a nice way of triggering these memories that I might have had to do manually before. So another, and, and this piece, as we may think, is really, really famous, and I would suggest that you actually read it. It's designed for a popular audience, um, and there's a lot of really sort of far, uh, very visionary sort of thinking and um, you know hypothesizing that goes on in that article. It's a really great example of someone who obviously, again, you know, didn't understand the technologies that were required because they hadn't been invented yet at the time you wrote the article, but understood some of the things that we wanted to build, understood some of the ways that we could put this technology to use to augment and to complement human intelligence.